Hello and welcome to the internetnextstep.com MLM software demo video showing off our members back office. So we've just logged into a members back office. The first thing we're confronted with is a message from admin. This could happen for a couple of reasons. It could simply be the member has submitted a support ticket and this is the answer to his support query. Or it could be that admin had a significant communication that they needed this member to see and they've added it to this members lounge. Once the member logs in, they're forced to acknowledge this note. And once they've acknowledged the note, they actually have the time and date as well as the IP address from where they acknowledged it stamped into the database for admin to be able to see um, down the road. So this allows positive communication where a member can't say, I didn't get the answer. I didn't get your notice. Uh, I should be credited back the last four months commissions because I didn't know. So very positive communication that helps solve an awful lot of issues. So we're going to say we've read the message so we can get into the actual members lounge. Okay. So if the member did not have um, any uh, communications waiting for him. He'd be right here in the members lounge. Uh, right at the very top, we have a quote of the day. We have over 14,000 uh, quotes uh, that are here. They're motivational. They're uplifting. Um, admin has control to edit all of them, delete them, add to them. Uh, full control in admin as to what is put into rotation here. Once you've set the list, it just rotates through them randomly. So, Upon logging into the Members Lounge, you're looking right at the dashboard. The format that we'll do this video in is we'll go quickly through all of the functionality. So the first tab, we'll start right here in the top left quadrant, and we've got our little Facebook feature here. Here's where your members can simply put in messages as they enroll people. There's automatic messages put in here as their personal downline enroll people. There's automatic messages put in here. It's all downline specific. Uh, the member does have control as to who their friends are. Admin also has some control as to who the friends are. So admin can lock down the ability for friends to be outside of the downline or they can allow friends to be outside of the downline. So very interesting feature here with a bunch of uh, control both at the admin and the members level. Our mail function. This is where we've put in a couple of test emails, but there's prospect mail, which means the um, prospect has gone to the about me page where they can submit a question to the member directly. It would then come to this area where you could have the member delete it or reply to it. Uh, he can click a button here to look at all of his all of his messages waiting. It's broken into sections. So there's also members mails. Um, these are intermember mails. So one member sends another member a mail within the system. This allows positive communication again because you're not in danger of your mails being scraped by spam filters. So this is actually within the system, all stays in the trap system with admin able to overview the communications going on back and forth. And then there's the admin mails. If admin's done an email blast or anything like that, that'll show up down in this section. To the next quadrant, here's where we give a compensation overview. We've got the rank tab, which gives uh, where the member's at, the highest rank they've received, the current rank that they're at, if they're qualified for fast start bonus, qualified for quality enroller bonus. And then we give a little breakdown of where they're at and how much more volume they'll need to reach the next level or where they're at in personal sponsors and how many more they need to reach the next level. So this little section will be customized to your particular compensation plan to show the metrics that the member wants to see at first glance. Of course, the next most important thing the members like to see is their earnings tab. So this is an overview of the earnings tab. Shows them what the account balance is in their personal account. We'll talk a little bit more about the personal account system uh, in a second. And then it gives a historical earnings by commission period as well as the ability to being able to look at them all. Uh, there's a top five report. The top five report simply shows the top five enrollers in the company for the last year uh, forever. It actually gets more and more detailed. In this case, the demo data doesn't have current data, or it would also be showing the last month, the last week, and the last day. So very motivational. Doesn't tell you how many they've sponsored, you just see that the top enroller in the last year has been uh, sim underscore 10108. So you know where the target is for you to catch up and be the supreme leader of the company. Placement, if your comp plan uh, includes the ability for placement to, to be set like a matrix or a binary, this section will automatically configure itself based upon the configuration settings you set uh, through admin. Uh, in this case, this commission plan is a one center binary to start and simply you would have the ability to go to the left leg or the right leg. So member can control the placement from here. If we now scroll down, we can get to the account tab. The account tab is where we're showing the actual personal account. 
The INS MLM software is one of the first softwares to have a full personal account or e-wallet system built into it. We've been doing it for about 12 years now. Uh, the concept being that rather than writing a paycheck to every member every single week, um, the uh, money goes into their personal account, which means it stays in your bank account, and then they request how much they would like to earn. They do have the ability to set up an automatic transfer or automatic withdrawal, and then they also have the ability to do intermember transfers and gift certificates. So here we can just see uh, this system is set up to deal with both Japanese yen and US dollars. So we could actually take a look at the two different currencies as well as there's a withdraw function. And you'll see that they've got reserved funds. Reserved funds simply shows anything that's in transit and hasn't been received on the other end, like a gift certificate, or possibly they've requested a withdrawal that admin has not yet processed. So reserved funds will show, and then it'll show you the actual available funds. Then it just gives you a list of all your recent transactions, your recent transfers, as well as your recent gift certificates with the ability to see the full details as well. We go to the transfers tab. This is where the member would actually issue a transfer of funds to another member. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, well, there's lots of countries in the world where Visa and MasterCard are not quite as prevalent as they are in North America, so you end up with leaders needing to sign people up in other ways. Well, a transfer allows you to transfer some of your money to another member. Maybe they're your friend, they live next door, they give you some cash, you transfer the money to them. Or you can actually use a gift certificate, and the gift certificate allows you to just send money to a person who is not yet a member. It gives them a little code, and when they sign up, if you sent them $500 by a gift certificate, certificate when they sign up they'll pick their initial order if their order came to $400 they enter the gift certificate code it's going to take $400 off of the $500 gift certificate and deposit the other $100 into their personal account that they could use for their auto ship in their following month so you've got the member transfers and the member gift certificates all part of the personal account or e-wallet system in the INS MLM software uh, you also can redeem a gift certificate here. So if another member sent you a gift certificate for whatever reason, normally they'd use a transfer, but sometimes people use things a different way. You would just enter the code here and it would deposit the money to your account immediately. The withdrawals tab is where the member can go to actually process a one-time only withdrawal or actually set up an automatic withdrawal. So in this case, this, this member has $14,000 or so in their account. They've got outstanding transfers of 475. They have a net available withdrawal of 13,000 and some dollars. So they could ask for their money by whatever payment types you accept. So in this case, it's set up for check, global exchange, and a direct credit that's only available in Australia. And they would put in how much they want by what payment type and click next. Set up automatic withdrawal. This is just a section where they could say, look, send me my money every week, every month, or send it to me whenever it's over $100. Leave behind $50 to cover my next auto ship. Um, so they can actually set up so that every week or every pay period or whatever your pay cycle is, their money automatically gets sent to them. So it can operate the new way or it can operate the old way where they get paid every single week. Most members, when they understand the power of the personal account and the uh, gift certificates and transfers, will definitely leave some money behind so that they can be facilitating their downlines growth in the case of no credit cards uh, with the use of personal account transfers and gift certificates. Okay, we'll click over to the auto ship tab. So this is just the metrics on the person's current auto ship, showing them what they have on auto ship, showing them the address that they're on auto ship for and the payment method. And of course, they can change all these things here. And then the invoices tab is simply a history of all the invoices where they can click in to get more details. So this is a quick overview of the dashboard. This is what the members see directly when they get in. Uh, the idea is to give them all the metrics that they want right in front of their face. And then if they want more information, they can start to do a little digging. So over here, you'll see the tools and settings section, and you'll see we've got a calendar function. The calendar function is very powerful. The member can actually put their own personal items on their calendar. They can actually put items on their calendar and submit them to anyone in their upline if they want to make the event available for everyone in their uplines downline. And they can also submit them directly to admin for admin to agree and then make the event public for everybody in the company's calendar. So from here, a member can add their own thing. They can add to their uplines thing or they can add to the entire admin corporate calendar. They also have the ability down at the bottom where if one of their members had asked to put something on their calendar, they would approve it in this section and then it would go live to the calendar for them and everybody in their downline. So very powerful feature for scheduling all of your events. A um, uh, little bit of fun as well. Uh, members tend to really like this section of the members lounge. The mail tab. 
This is where the member can send an inter-member mail and they can also monitor all of their emails. So the tab that you looked at on the dashboard interface was the um, overview of the mail section and then this is the actual place where they can go to really get into the meat of it to send a message to another member. They can sort their mails by different categories. So in this case, if we click prospects, this would show us all of the mails that the member has had sent to them from their about me page. If we click members, it's going to show them all of their mails that have come from another members. Of course, sent is the ones that they've sent admin or any email blasts that have come from admin. Um, and then downline received and downline sent. So if they've sent email blast to their downline, they'll show up here. And if they've received email blast from their upline, they would show up here. So here's where they would click a new mail to send a new mail to one of their members. All they need to know is the username to do that. So very powerful member to member emailing, as well as collecting all data from interested prospects without the interested prospects ever needing to know the email address, which can prevent an awful lot of spam, as well as keep your your MLM software safe from the hacking community who loves MLM data. Um, so anytime you display an email address, somebody is going to come along and write a little robot to scrape that email address, create a database and sell it to your competition or to a list broker, uh, which will very much fatigue your members. So the INS system protects you by having that email function be something that they can send you an email through a form without ever knowing the actual member's underlying email address. We'll show you a little bit about how that works towards the end of this video. Details. This is just the section where the member control all of their personal details. So they can change a bunch of information about themselves in this section. Uh, they can add addresses. Again, we have a very advanced address function where we can track all their addresses. Very often, members tend to use their auto ship to prospect people. So they'll come in and change their address and send their auto ship to their grandmother in New York when they live in Los Angeles versus receiving the auto ship and then resending it and paying freight twice. So the problem with that is, is members seem to be very terrible at getting their own address or any other address entered into the system correctly. So once you've got an address that is confirmed working, it's better to have that remain in the system and then the member can actually just swap between addresses. So they can add a new address of their grandma, they can swap that with their shipping address and then they can just swap right back to their own address. It eliminates a bunch of data entry errors which of course saves you money because you have less packages coming back because they couldn't be delivered due to invalid addresses. Uh, and a website, this is actually where the member sets up their About Me page. So they can upload their photo, they can in put their story. Uh, they can also decide that they don't want to have an about me link. So they can actually turn off the about me link from their replicated website if for some reason they don't want people learning about them or contacting them. Um, they also have the ability to decide what is displayed on the genealogy report. So they can actually say, I don't want my name to show up on the genealogy report. They uncheck a button and now they've got full privacy in the genealogy report. Same goes for their phone number. Uh, these settings are overridden if admin has decided that they they aren't going to show them anyways. So these will only show up to be added or subtracted based upon admin having them enabled in the first place. Uh, member can fill in their name, location, phone, fax, email. The display area over here controls the macros that you may or may not choose to use in your website design. So if you've enabled the macros somewhere in your public website, this is where the member can decide if they actually want their details shown or not shown if you've enabled the macros to display everyone's information. We really recommend being careful about displaying a lot of personal details. Members tend to love the idea of displaying personal details, but the more information you give, especially if you ever show an email address. Um, email address, first name, last name, and phone number are very, very valuable data. And if you're showing it on your home page, uh, that can be scraped by a robot and sold to a list broker. So even though you'll get pressure from your members that it's so cool and it should show who they are and everyone will be happy about that, it's actually not a good idea. Our About Me page handles it in a better way. You also can have them put in their Twitter URL, Facebook URL, LinkedIn URL, as well as in here they can set their default language. So if you've got your website in a number of different languages, your member can decide what language they would like to have as a default language. So when someone comes to their replicated website, they will see the default language picked here versus the default language of the company, which may be English or Japanese, depending on where your company is. And then down here is where they would write their story for everybody to learn a little bit about them. So let's go back up and now we will take a look at recognition. Recognition ties into some recognition reports. 
This is where your member can upload their photo and upload their little message that they would like to have shown off to the world. This all goes to an approval section in admin. So you make sure that the photo is acceptable. You make sure that the message is acceptable. It's not someone trying to cross, -bus cross sponsor for another company. Uh, this also can be set to have this photo and message show up on the uh, leader listing report that we showed. So with the flick of a switch, you can make this become a hot link for anyone who's uploaded their photo and message and have it approved by admin so that on the leader listing someone can click on that hot link and see who the person is and uh, read their story. So again, fun things for the members. We'll now take a look at the news feed. This is where you can control how you set up the news feed. So your member in this case controls what they want to have happen. So they can say, I want to see when I sponsor someone and show it in my news feed and anyone that's their friends are going to see their news feed just like Facebook. So when I sponsor someone, I want it in my news feed. Um, when I rank up, I want it in my news feed. And then you can also have an email sent anytime someone generates a news item about you. So this is some control that the member has. Admin also has some control about what's allowed and who's allowed to be friends and, and that kind of stuff. But the member has these controls as to how cluttered they want their news feed to be. Shorten URL is just a cute little tool. Uh, we've all heard of tiny URL um, and these services. This is just your own ability to pick from a whole bunch of different domain names so your member can be shortening stuff for their Twitter accounts or for whatever else they may want to shorten stuff for. Or maybe they want to shorten something uh, just because they want to hide the actual URL. You know, maybe they shorten their own replicated website so it doesn't say myamazingmlmcompany.com forward slash Joe, but rather says uh, twt.bz forward slash two. So it's just a way to take a URL, make it much shorter, and also make it a bit more anonymous. Email options is where the member controls what kind of emails they wish to receive from others. So they can say, I am okay with getting a generic or an email blast from my upline. I'm okay with an individual email from my upline. So a person to person email. So I could say, I don't want blasts because they're normally useless, but I'm more than happy when someone wants to personally connect with me in my upline. I do not want company emails because I just, I'm, I'm just a customer. I just don't want to be bothered, whatever it may be, as well as whether they want the email to come to them from the above me page. And this just controls what email they will see versus what email is uh, ignored by them. Email downline. This is the email blaster where the member can actually send a blast to their entire downline. Uh, they can choose whether they want to send to distributors only or customers only or both. And admin has a bunch of controls on whether this person is actually allowed to do a blast, whether you want to preview their blast before they send it or let it get sent in real time. So there's a bunch of controls at the admin section um, that the member doesn't necessarily know about. So if if you suddenly are concerned about this member cross-sponsoring, you can actually monitor the email blasts he's doing so that nothing bad gets out to the group. And then finally, um, the friends section. This is where a member can add friends and depending on how they've done things, their personal sponsored would automatically be added as their friends if admin has allowed that. And then you can take people off your friends list. So now let's go into the shopping cart section. This is where your members can place a member order, we'd see one view of the shopping cart. Now, in the INS MLM software, we actually have three completely different custom views of the shopping cart, a list view, this is our tiled view, and then an actual text-based view. So depending on how many items you have and how you'd like to display them, you can pick between one of three different views and the whole shopping cart will show differently. So this is just where a member would place additional orders for additional products not on auto ship. Uh, if you were using the product download function, we also have a product download function. Uh, this allows you to sell PDFs or informational based items where once the member has paid for it, they would come to the product download section to actually download their digital items. You have control in admin for how long that download link stays alive, uh, how many times they can download it before they have to get permission to download it more often, and a whole bunch of other controls at the admin side of configuring the product download section. If you're not doing any product download um, type items, then this section just wouldn't show up and they'd only have access to add new items to their shopping cart. Let's go look at the finances tab. So now let's look at the payment type section. 
Payment type section is where the member can enter in all of their data based upon the payment types that the company accepts. Uh, credit card information will be stored at time of sign up, so they don't need to add another one. But this is where they would edit if they ever change their credit card, or they could add additional cards to this section. Any payment types that the company allows are going to be shown right here. And based upon the particular payment type that is selected, the data fields will automatically adjust themselves so the member can enter the appropriate data to be paid or to pay by that particular uh, payment type. Now I have a quick look at our viewers. We've got a whole bunch of different viewers. So we ship the system with all of the viewers turned on and then you can very easily control what viewers the member uh, can see. So let's take a look now at our viewers section. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of different viewers in the system. Uh, we ship with the system uh, having them all turned on and then you can actually decide which ones you want to show and which ones you don't. Uh, I'll just explain them briefly here and then we'll come back towards the end of the video and go look at them in detail. Um, we've got a genealogy report. This is your standard list-based genealogy. Uh, all data-driven, not graphical at all, updated once a day. Uh, we've got the genealogy personally sponsored, exactly same report but follows the personally sponsored tree versus the binary or matrix tree in the case of a unilevel. The genealogy and genealogy personally sponsored are, are quite similar. We've got the viewer sponsor. This is actually a graphical viewer that shows the sponsor tree, so from sponsor to sponsor versus the placement tree. We've got the matrix viewer, which is a file-based system viewer that's very convenient for matrices or unilevels. We've got a binary viewer. This one is specifically tournament style and for the um, binary only. And then we've got a standard placement viewer that's good for binaries or unilevels or matrices. Okay, so the next thing we're going to show you is the support section. This is where the member comes if they do, do have a problem. Uh, they can submit a ticket. This is where they just come in and they put in the particular problem. They pick the category. Categories are all configurable by admin, so you can put as many categories in as you want. They ask their question. They can upload any supporting documentation, and this will submit the ticket to the help desk system. They can go and take a look at their existing tickets on their My Ticket link. Uh, right now there isn't any tickets and so there's a convenient link to the Submit a Ticket. Uh, promotional tips. This is just a little place that we give uh, a little bit of information like where their website is, the ability to bookmark it. Because our system is very secure and uses a security GUID, if they just bookmark from going to their website, it'll bookmark the wrong thing. So this is where we give them a little tool that they can click a button and it will appropriately bookmark their site for them when they want to come back later. Um, IRS form W-9, this is just where they can get the W-9 uh, that they need to submit to the company if you're a U.S. company. If you're not a U.S. company, you can just disable this link. And then the FAQ, the Submit ticket function and the FAQ function are closely tied. Any ticket submitted can be easily turned into an FAQ in one fell swoop at the admin side. And then here's where the member can see the actual FAQ listing of all the questions for non-members and all the questions for members. Because we are logged into a member section, we can see the member's FAQ. If we were in the public area and we clicked on the same FAQ link, we would only see the non-members FAQ. So the longer you're in business, the more questions and answers there are, the more the member can help themselves before they actually come to support for questions. So it gets very, very efficient as things go on. We give you a little placeholder link for terms and conditions. Um, right, this one isn't populated but you could actually have your terms and conditions duplicated here so that a member can come and refer back to them. The terms and conditions are accepted at the time that they sign up, so they are seeing them during sign up. They are agreeing to them. This is just a place where you could also put them for them to see. Um, and that's sort of a quick tour of the member's lounge.